equally divided now between obstetrics and gynecology. Um, um, so I run the gamut from um, prenatal all the way to death when it comes to women's health. Okay. And you said you've been doing that how long? Uh, I graduated medical school in 2002. I graduated residency in 2006, and so I've been in practice here since 2006. I was with Dr. Pettit when I first year out. Okay. And if you would give the uh, members of the jury an idea about your educational background, where you went to school. I know you said you graduated in 06. Yeah, so I started undergrad at uh, University of Cincinnati, and I spent uh, two and a half years there. I took a little sabbatical, and I finished up my undergrad at Ohio State University. I went to medical school at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, and then I did my internship and residency, a combined internship residency in obstetrics and gynecology split program between Athens, Ohio and Portsmouth, Ohio, and as soon as I finished, I stayed here. Okay. And do you have professional licenses or board certifications? Yes. Uh, so I'm licensed in Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Florida, and I'm a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist okay. through the American Osteopathic Obstetrics Gynecology Board. Okay. Hey, Handy, what's being marked as State's Exhibit 17 for our identification? The records of reflect and showing that specific. Doctor, do you recognize that document? <clears throat> yes. Okay, what is that? This is my CV. Okay, and so that just explains all the qualifications we just went over, your employment history, your educational background, yes. your licenses. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time we've moved to have him uh, declared an expert uh, as an OBGYN. Does either the defendant switch to question him as to his expertise? No, Your Honor. No objection. No, Your Honor. We would so stipulate. Uh, Dr. Adams will be uh, found to be an expert in his field of obstetrics and gynecology. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what that means is that Dr. Adams will be allowed to offer opinion testimony uh, in his field. Hutchinson, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Doctor, let me direct your attention to January 2019. Uh, specifically January 10th, uh, did you have an opportunity to assist in the medical care of defendant Jessica Groves? Okay. I'm going to need you to speak up. It's, uh... I, sorry. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Um, explain to the jury how you became involved. Uh, they called me early in the morning uh, for someone to come to triage. It's our emergency rooms in the obstetrics unit for someone with no prenatal care and active labor, almost complete. And so then I, I came to the hospital and that's why I first met her. Okay, and approximately what time did you arrive? Um, if I recall the times, I think about nine, or excuse me, 6.54 or something like that. I can't remember the actual numbers. I have to look at the numbers. Okay, all right. Um, explain to the jury what your role was there. Uh, I was on call for no prenatal care or walk-in patients for the, uh, that morning. And for someone who has no prenatal care, I take care of those that walk in that need help. So I showed up and I evaluated okay. uh, the patient. You said you were on call? Yes. So do the OBGYNs rotate mm -hmm. that call for? For no prenatal care, we do. For no prenatal care patients? Yes. Okay. And what medical history or information did you receive from your nursing staff regarding the defendant and her pregnancy prior to you actually treating her? Uh, just that, that she had no prenatal care and she was about to deliver a baby to get in here as soon as possible. Okay. Um, did you ask any questions directly of this defendant or her husband? I did. Okay. Explain did. to the jury what that was. Well, when I arrived to triage, she was nine and a half centimeters dilated. And for you that don't know, complete dilation prior to delivery is 10 centimeters dilated, so she was almost ready to deliver. So I made a quick examination of the patient and asked her some questions. Um, at that time, though, she was distant and didn't answer many of my questions. Okay. If you would explain to the members of the jury why prenatal care is important uh, for a mother to follow through with. Yeah, so prenatal care, it's the stalwart for us. We can help 
actually prenatal care actually starts with preconception care. So we like to optimize the female's body so that it can be receptive to pregnancy and also we can identify any risk factors that we might have to take care of during the pregnancy that might optimize the environment of the mother and then optimize the outcome. Okay. And are there risks in not um, going to your prenatal care or well, seeking certainly. out prenatal care? Certainly. It depends on what's, what's in the history that we, that we have to look at. Uh, risk factors such as smoking, high blood pressure, other issues that we need to identify and optimize so we get a good outcome. Okay. And you said you did ask some questions of her and she did not answer? Very distant. She was distant. Uh, so directly, I can't remember her answering any questions at that time. Okay. Were there any pain medications or narcotics administered to this defendant? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Do you know why? Uh, normally, uh, women get epidurals prior to delivery. Uh, but she was so close to delivery, we don't give narcotics that close to delivery because the baby doesn't have an adverse reaction or uh, have a difficulty after de a delivery if we've got a narcotic that close to delivery. Okay. What was her demeanor? Did she appear to be in pain yeah. like a normal patient would be a dilated Most pain? women, when they're complete, if they have no pain medic medication on board or no epidural, would be in extreme pain and showing that. Like I said, she was just distant and an odd reaction. Okay. Did she ask for pain medication? Not to my knowledge. Okay. About how long were you there before the baby was born? I think it was just several minutes. Okay, just several minutes? Yeah, like two to four minutes, I believe, once I got there and got her set for delivery and I had a baby. Okay. And once the baby's born, what do you do? Um, I deliver a child, I cut and clamp the cord, and then the nursery nurses take over. And then I watch for mom and I deliver the placenta. I check for tears for lacerations at delivery. I repair them. And after that, my job is finished, and I normally leave. Okay. Do you recall having any specific concerns about this patient, um, given any information you received, or the fact that she didn't have any prenatal care? Well, there's always concerns when there's no prenatal care, because you never know what you're going to have. Uh, and during the course of that several minutes, it was brought to light that she had had some substance abuse in the last few days. And so that's something we have to take take into consideration with the child. Okay. Doctor, do you see in your practice uh, mothers that are have substance abuse issues or that are under the influence? Certainly. That's okay. right. Would you say that she was under the influence as she was there in labor that day? In my opinion, with her being so distant and acting not like we normally see, I believe she might have been impaired. Okay. Were you involved any further uh, in the care of Defendant Jessica Groves after the delivery? Yes. Um, so like I said, I left the room. They called me back after her blood pressure had dropped and she started having vaginal bleeding. Uh, they called, it's called a rapid response. So if her blood pressure drops and her vital signs go, there's a rapid response team at our hospital. That way we can have all people on board. Uh, they did arrive at the floor and called me and I did come to the floor to evaluate her for her vaginal bleeding. Okay. And do you know about how long of a time span between delivery of the baby and this issue? That was at 9.40ish or so, I believe. I, okay. So hours? Hours. A yeah, okay. couple hours later, yes. Uh, in between that time, were you notified of any problems uh, with the patient? None at that time. Okay. If you would explain to the members of the jury what you did to treat the hemorrhage that she had there. Yeah, so she had no IV access. So I gave her some medication called Methergen. It's a medicine to clamp the uterus down to help stop bleeding. I also examined her uh, bottom and also cleaned out her uterus with, uh, it's called sponge forceps. She had some clots in there. Uh, cleaned that out. We rapidly got the uterus to clamp back down. But she did have a significant amount of bleeding. Okay. And did she recover okay after that? 
Certainly. So after we got IV access, actually was a central line that we had one of our physician assistants from the ICU come down and put in since we couldn't get peripheral IV access. Once we got her stabilized, we moved her to a different floor where we could monitor with an EKG on maternity. We can't monitor the baby or the mom's heart. So we had to move her to a different floor so we could monitor her. Uh, I think she spent the night, we gave her one unit of blood because her blood dropped. And I think we stabilized her and she was discharged home after that the next day. She was discharged home the next day? I believe it was the next day. Okay. Let me back up just a minute and ask you, uh, show you State's Exhibit 18. Sir, if you could identify the document that I just needed. Yes. What is that? That's the uh, newborn identification form. Okay. And how do you recognize it? Um, there's a footprint on there, and this is what the uh, nursery does. Uh, they perform this once the, the child's born and put on there. Okay. And does your signature appear on there? My name's at the top up top, and okay. the nursery nurse has signed that. Okay. And it if, just go ahead. I'm sorry. No, so my name is at the top, but my signature is not on here. The electronic stamp is on the bottom, but my hand signature is not on there. Okay. If I could put that up so the jury could see it. If you would, before I take that, because I'm not sure you'll be able to see it when we put it up there. It's not yes. a, The picture's not as good. Um, tell the members of the jury uh, the baby's weight, <coughs> length, uh, upon delivery. Um... Yes, sorry. Uh, five pounds, 10 ounces was the weight, and the length was 19 inches, and it was a male. Okay. Anything else you'd like? No, I'll put it up for you. Yes. Okay. And identifies information about the birth, right. height, weight, date of birth. Correct. Okay. I can have just a few minutes. just a few more questions um you said the delivery happened within minutes yes. is that right um would you call that an uneventful delivery uneventful okay so no injuries to the baby as a result of birth no injuries to the baby okay does that occur sometimes do the injuries babies are occur? injured while they're being born oh uninjured most of the time that's that's the way it happens that they have no injuries at all with birth okay but it does occur sometimes occasionally you do have injuries at birth okay Baby Dylan did not have any injuries as a result of his birth. Not at all. Okay. I think that's all I have at this time. Ms. Hutchinson, uh, Mr. Stratton, you may cross-examine. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Dr. Adams. Good morning, sir. Uh, just a few questions. Um, you said you asked some questions of Jessica. Um, do you remember what those questions were? I was just trying to get uh, past medical history from her. Okay. Um, could you give an example of some of those questions? Yeah, I normally, I typically ask, and this is what I ask her, uh, past medical history, past surgical history, any medication she's currently on, or any illicit substances. And how did you describe her earlier? Distant. Distant. Um, could you explain that a little bit, bit more about what you mean by distant? Distant. Well, in my opinion... She was, lack of terms here, uh, not aloof, 
Not responding to my questions. Not responding. Yeah. Okay. Was she not? She was re- alert, but not responding. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. That she, if she was alert and able to answer your questions, did she seem like she was in pain or? Not for someone at that stage of, of labor. Okay. Um, Dylan, was he delivered early? Was he delivered early? What? Uh, he wasn't full term, was he? At the time with no prenatal care, it's hard to tell at that in that time frame. Okay. So you're not sure at that time when you were delivering how many weeks he was? With no prenatal care, there's no way to ascertain that at the time. Okay. All right. No further questions, John. Mr. Stratt, Ms. Scott, you may cross-examine the witness. I believe that you stated that you were approximately um, in the room a very short period of time, correct? Just minutes, and then correct. you had some after um, care and follow up with the mom. Is that correct? Correct. Um, both parents were in the room, or do you recall? I do recall him being in the room. Okay, you do recall Mr. Groves being in the room. Yes. Did you have any direct conversations with Mr. Groves that you can recall? I don't recall that. Okay. Um, so you do not know if he participated in any of the uh, questions, or you probably may not have been directing your questions to him. I don't recall that. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Any further questions, Ms. Scott? No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Is this witness free to go? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Stratton? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Scott? Excused. Doctor, you're free to go. Thank, Thank you, you for your time much. today. State may call their next witness. Your Honor, the state would uh, call back to the stand Patricia Kraft. Patricia Kraft. testimony you're about to give to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. And please have a seat. Ma'am, I asked you yesterday, do you object, uh, there's media in the courtroom, do you object to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony? Yes. The witness has objected, we'll direct that the camera be lowered and there'll be no uh, photography uh, of her image during her testimony. Tiemann, you may continue your direct examination of the witness. Thank you, ma'am. Just for the record, could you state your name again? Patricia Kraft. All right. Uh, I'm going to hand you what has been marked State's Exhibit 16. Um, For purposes of reviewing this, if you would, set it right here on the corner of this platform like that. Um, You may have to lean forward, which is okay to to review it. Um, And there are uh, some paper clips we'll discuss here later. And I'll direct you where to go from from here, okay? Okay. All right, ma'am, we've already talked about how this case got started, so we're not going to start from scratch. We're going to pick up where we left off. Um, Let's get this out of the way right now, however. Um, Ma'am, would you agree that whether it was through a safety plan or custody with a case plan, uh, there was all of a decision to place the child in the care of the father. It was uh, d- decided that if he could pass the drug screen and the cat was negative, that the child would be placed with him only. Okay. So, and at this point in time, uh, and if I'm referring to page 2 of 89 from the activity logs that uh, should be in front of you there. Um, on January 11th, do you see that? Uh, that uh, references is uh, one of the records of Children's Services that there was a, 
a caseworker for an investigator named Lauren Johnson who did a drug screen on that date. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And on that day, according to the records, Daniel tested negative for any substances. He was negative. All right. And that went into part of uh, the whole safety plan that Investigator Johnson was working on at that point. Correct. Okay. So, is it fair to say there were some initial understandings from Dad uh, by Children's Services? Uh, was he to have a steady job? Yes. Did he, according to Children's Services knowledge at that time, have a steady job? Yes, he did. Where did he work? He stated he worked at Rural King in Waverly. All right. And was he to be drug free? Yes. Did he indicate to Children's Services he didn't have a problem with drugs? Yes. Did he also indicate if there was a difference between um, or a conflict between his children and his wife, did he indicate who he would side with? No. His children. Okay. So that was an understanding, too. If something came up, he's going to take the children's side. Yes. Did he indicate whether or not he would protect his children from harm? Yes, he did. And who made these representations to you or your agency? Mr. Groves. By the way, do you know how drug screens were done by Children's Services in January of 2019? The, the person comes in, they go to the bathroom, they are told not to flush the toilet or turn on the water. Does an agent from Children's Services follow them into the restroom? No, we stand beside the door. All right, is the door open or closed? It's usually cracked. It depends on the worker. All right. Do you observe the urine come from the person into the cup? Yes. No, no. You do not? We don't observe it, no. Okay. Now, You've had a chance to review this record, and you were intimately involved in the case as a caseworker, correct? Correct. Uh, is it fair to say that Children's Services put some requirements on the dad uh, if he were to receive placement uh, of this child? Yes. All right. um, first, was there an understanding that he would have to work with Children's Services? Yes. Was there an understanding that uh, there would be uh, weekly contact with Children's Services? In, with the investigator, once it came over to me, it would have been a seven-day follow-up appointment, home visit, then a four-week, and then monthly after that. Was there an understanding that um, if you were to call them and try to get a hold of them, he would have to contact you back? Yes. Was there an understanding that mother would receive drug treatment? Yes. Was there an understanding that mother could not be in the home except for supervised business? Yes. Was there an understanding that dad would remain employed and not have any drug issues? Yes. Was there an understanding that uh, the parents would apply for any public benefits that would be available for the child? Yes. What kind of public benefits would they need to apply for? They would apply for food stamps but we would keep the medical card because he would be in our custody. Okay. And of course they would get WIC. All right, were there any other agencies they needed to cooperate with to effectuate the public uh, benefits? We, use, we send referrals to help me grow for every infant. And did you do so in this case? Yes. And I apologize, I might have mentioned that mom was to continue to have drug treatment? Mother was to continue to have drug treatment and go to drug court and individual and counseling. All right. And who assured you that these things would happen? Mr. Groves and Jessica Groves. Ultimately, uh, was the child being Dylan Groves, baby Dylan, removed from the custody of the parents? We obtained temporary custody of Dylan. And as part of that custody, if 
Children's services wanted the child to be produced. Are the parents or the who the child was placed with responsible for bringing that child to children's services? Yes. Are they required to do so? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach? You may approach. Let the record reflect on handing the witness, uh, showing the counsel of the market state's exhibit 10, 11, and 12. Ma'am, if you could, could you uh, tell the jury what those three documents are? It is an order that um, the underlying request a protective order vesting in the custody of Dillon in Scioto County Children's Services Board. All right, so we've got in front of you, and I'm going to put up here on the I'm going to go through them again, Your Honor. State Exhibit 10 here. All right. It's kind of hard to see, but can you read what this case is styled as um, here? In the matter of Dylan Groves and Daniel Groves. All right. And what I have on the screen here is State Exhibit 10. And this is, uh, you can find on the right side what this document purports to be. Um, what is this document I have up here on the screen? I can't really see it. Is that a complaint? Complaint, yeah. Uh, and so is this the complaint that Children's Services initially filed to obtain custody of uh, Dylan and Daniel Burns? Yes. The other one's from here. State's Exhibit 11. Uh, what is State's Exhibit 11? Can you see that okay? It's the affidavit. All right. What's, what's the affidavit? That is where the investigator goes and types up a filing summary, and it is um, signed and entered into the court when she goes to testify. Okay. So uh, when a child is removed from, <coughs> or when Children's Services wishes to remove a child from uh, his or her parents, um, those are, are those the documents they file with the court? Yes. And uh, the in this particular case, do you recall if, uh, those that complaint alleged an emergency at the time. I'm not, I'm unaware of that one. Okay. Well, let me ask it this way. Was court, uh, was the child removed at the hospital? Yes. All right. And uh, was there a court order at that point to remove the child? Yes. Okay. Are you sure? Mm, I'm, I'm checking my records. No, there was no court order. Okay. So then, after the removal, they had to get an emergency order before the next day? Is that the yes. Case? Okay. And then we have State Exhibit 12 here. Uh, is this, what is this document? That's the entry from the court. Okay. So this is the court's order uh, from the complaint. Yes. Uh, okay. And then this order, who is custody vested with um, with regard to Bill and Rose? Children's Services. These three exhibits, exhibits 10, 11, and 12, uh, did those appear to be accurate copies of juvenile court uh, pleadings? Yes. Okay. 
Um, who was, uh, when, when you remove a child from, its, from his or her parents, um, where does the child go? Where does he go? Where does any child go? When, what's the procedure? When a child is removed, if we cannot find kinship care or family to take care of him, we will call uh, foster parents and other agencies to see if they would have placement. In this particular case, who was the child initially placed with? Andrea Bowling. Okay. And uh, who is Andrea Bowling to the child? Foster parent. Okay. Is she with the Children's Services Foster Care Network? Yes. Okay. And um, tell me about Andrea Bowling. Um, she was called by uh, the investigator to see if she would take placement of Dylan, in which she did, and she went to the hospital and picked him up. Okay. Um, I, I think you testified earlier yesterday that you were previously a foster parent. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Uh, what are the what kind of training do you have to have to become a foster parent? You have to have 36 hours of training, and then yearly you have to have 24. Okay. Um, what kind of training is that? It goes from abuse to um, sexual abuse all the way up to um, delinquents, how to care for them, drug treatment, and that they have to follow the court orders as well as you do. Okay. And to your knowledge, did Ms. Bowling have that training? Yes. And um, was she under those requirements to care for Dylan Groves? Yes. And uh, did she take Dylan, to your knowledge, to all his medical appointments? Yes. Did she take Dylan, uh, or did she contact the various agencies to help or assist with the public benefits? Yes. Did she maintain contact with Children's Services? Yes, with the investigator. Did she fully comply with every request that Children's Services made of her? Yes. Were there any problems or concerns with baby Dylan from his time with Ms. Bowling? Yes, the time that uh, it was decided that Dylan was to go with his dad. Okay. Um, let me back up a step, though. With regard to how she treated Dylan and cared for Dylan, were there any concerns with Children's Services about her care of Dylan? No, no. Okay. All right. When did you first begin casework services in this matter? I was transferred the case on um, January the 25th. Okay. And if you need to refer to the, the record or your notes, feel, feel free. Um, I might direct you from time to time if we ask about specific activity law. All right. So on, I want to refer to you page 18 of 89. Uh, the date, uh, January 24th. Yes. All right. Uh, was there uh, any kind of meeting at Children's Services that day? It was a family team meeting. Okay. Were you part of the family team meeting? Yes. All right. Um, who else was part of the family team meeting? Caseworker Johnson, Miss Bowling, and the parents of Dylan. All right. And um, when, when did you first meet the parents of Dylan? On the 25th okay. at this meeting. Okay. At this meeting? Okay. Um, and I think I already had you identify them earlier. Um, who are the parents of Dylan Groves? Daniel is with the black and white shirt and Jessica is with the white Carnegie. All right. And they are the parents of Dylan Grove? Yes. All right. And so they were at this meeting? Yes. Did they arrive timely to the meeting? They was a little late. How late? Probably about 15 minutes. Okay. And uh, was there anything to follow the meeting with Children's Services? They had a visit. Okay. Uh, what kind of visit did they, were they supposed to have? Just a, an hour visit. All right. Where does that take place? It happens in the um, conference room. Okay. or in the visitation room in the other building. Okay. But theirs was in the conference room. Okay. Um, so, so everybody knows where it is. Where's Children's Services located? 3940 Gallia Street, okay. New Boston. New Boston, Ohio. Okay, and that facility has the administrative uh, 
offices there? Yes. And it also has rooms for conferences? Yes. It also has uh, play areas, for lack of a better word, recreational areas for, for kids? Yes. Okay. So it's the one, if I drive towards Portsmouth, uh, if I look on my left, there's a, an older style building and then like a little playground and a, um, like a modular building beside it? Yes. Okay. And the conference room, was it in the main building? Yes, main building. And um, was any decision made with regard to the family team meeting at that point regarding the placement of Dylan Groves? Not at that time. Okay. And what was discussed in the team meeting? We introduced ourselves. I um, asked if there was any concerns with Dylan, and um, then the parents came in in and they was introduced to the foster parent. Okay. Now there's another son I don't want to leave out. Um, they have another child? Yes. Who's that? Daniel Groves Jr. All right. How old is Daniel Groves? 14. 14. Um, was there any plan or care for Daniel? No. Daniel was still at his dad's okay. with his dad. Okay. And what was the reasoning behind that? Because Daniel, Daniel Jr. had said that he had never seen his mom and dad do anything in front of him. Okay. And he was 14. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between a 14-year-old's uh, ability to report an issue and a baby? 14-year-old can report, a newborn can't. Okay. All right, so we have this team meeting. Um, did you go over the rules and requirements that Children's Services was going to have of the patient, or of the patients, of the parents at this meeting? We did. We told her that she needed the drug assessment and alcohol assessment. She needed individual counseling, and she needed to comply with court orders. And were the responsibilities and requirements that dad had to follow as well? Yes. He had to do the same thing. Okay. Uh, so that was followed, you mentioned, by... A, a visit, a visitation? Yes. Were you part of the visitation? No. Was any um, work or children's services part of the visitation? No. Uh, who was in the visitation? Jessica and Daniel and Dylan. Okay. Initially, was Andrea Bowling part of the visitation? She was there, and then she left. Okay. Is that normal, that they give them time with their, they give the baby time with the parents without foster care parent or a children's services worker there? Unless it's court ordered to be supervised. Okay. To your knowledge, was there a specific court order with regard to a visit to children's services no. being supervised? No, there's okay. no order. During this time period, um, what was Children's Services doing uh, to, to, to effectuate their goals? We was making referrals to help me grow, and Ms. Johnson had called Mahajan. Okay, what is Mahaj? Mahajan is a uh, drug and counseling center. Okay. It's located here locally? It's in New Boston. So we have, um, and Help Me Grow, is it here locally as well? Yes. Okay. So we have the agency, uh, through one of its workers, um, contacting these and starting to set up a process for the, for the services for the parents. Yes. And at some point, uh, was there a change in the placement of baby Bill? Yes. When was that? The, ch the change was on January the 28th is when he was to pick up Dylan. Okay. How, how was the change, how did the change happen? It was, uh, there was a conversation going on between Ms. Johnson and the supervisor that if he could pass another drug screen that he would be able to get Dylan back because he had no violent criminal history, he had no, no involvement with CPS and that he passed his drug screen. Okay. And uh, was he uh, able to pass a drug screen at that point? Yes. And who administered that drug screen? I did. Okay. 
And you had indicated before how you administered the drug screen uh, that uh, did he uh, explain how that drug screen was. He came into the building. I uh, showed him where the restroom was. I told him not to flush the toilet or run the water. He went in. I stood at the door, and I had it cracked open. Okay. Uh, prior to that drug screen, did you search him? Make no. Search? No. Okay. Um, uh, you stayed outside. Did you have uh, visual on him um, providing the sample? No. Okay. Uh, that sample came back clean? Clean. All right, and uh, from there, um, were arrangements made with the foster mom to give custody, not custody, placement of Dylan to his father. Yes. Um, were there any concerns? You'd mentioned earlier there was concerns with the foster mom about that. Yes. Uh, what were her concerns? The concerns was um, that he had a criminal history and that he was okay, had a I'll stop you there. Um, you indicated he didn't have any violent criminal history, correct? Right, there was no violence. Okay. All right. Um, did she indicate anything about her observations during the... Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, during... Uh, Testimony a few minutes ago, you heard some unsubstantiated claims about a criminal record of one of the defendants in this matter from a person who has not testified, or at least not yet testified. You must not speculate and consider that evidence for any purpose. You must not speculate as to whether or not that is true or not true. Uh, uh, if we get into that later, we'll address that at that time. Can you all follow my instruction on this matter? anyone that feels that they cannot. None of the jurors have indicated they cannot follow my instruction. We'll expect you not to consider that portion of the testimony and it will be stricken. Mr. Teeman, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ma'am, uh, with regard to the visitation and the concerns expressed by Ms. Bowling, were there concerns addressed by Ms. Bowling as to her observations of the demeanor or the condition of the parents during this visitation? It was stated that the, she thought they was loopy. Okay. That Miss Groves was loopy. Okay. Did she make any concerns about the demeanor of Mr. Groves? No. Okay. Did she further explain what, according to the records, what she meant by loopy? Of that she was uh, on drugs. Okay. All right, uh, so at this point, it's fair to say that you've taken over the primary role in this case for Children's Services Board. Yes. Okay. And uh, was Mr. Groves under the same requirements uh, that uh, he'd initially made, that he, he be clean and, and not addicted to drugs, that he be employed, that mom only be in the home on supervised visits, um, that she would continue to do drug treatment, and that he would protect his children? Yes. What was your next uh, step in your caseworker responsibilities? To make sure that the placement, um, w that the Dylan was handed over to Mr. Groves on Monday. All right. And how did that go? I was not there. I was in El Dorado, Ohio. It took place with my supervisor. Okay. Uh, any indications from the record or from your knowledge that there was any issues with the transition? They was a little late. That's all I was told. Okay. Who was late? Mr. Groves. All right. So Mr. Groves was late for picking up his son? Yes. Okay. And uh, when was your next contact supposed to be with Mr. Groves? I was supposed to go out on February the 1st, which is a Friday. Uh, but due to the road conditions, I was not able to go, so I scheduled it for Monday the 4th. Okay. So was that the date where um, you were actually going to also go with uh, Stephanie Jenkins from Help Me Grow? Yes. Okay. Um, that's not a usual thing. That's not a requirement that she go with you at that point. But 
you guys were going that day together? Yes. Okay. And um, so when did, when did you conduct the home visit? I conducted it on February the 4th okay. at 2 o'clock. Could you describe uh, the location of the home uh, inside of County, Ohio? Once you turn into the holler, you go up, and then the trailer is back off in the woods a little bit. Okay. Um, is this in, uh, in or near Otway, Ohio? Otway. Okay. And what was the address of the home? 2241 Mount Hope Road. Okay. In Otway? In Otway. And is that inside of County, Ohio? Yes. Um, is the driveway paved or gravel or, or what? It's dirt. Dirt driveway? Yeah. Okay. Um, on February 4th, what was the weather like that day? Cold and raining. Cold and raining. All right. What were the conditions on the driveway? Muddy. Muddy. Um, what time did you get there? Are you, uh, about 1.55. Okay. It's a stupid question, but I want to make sure that's the afternoon, right? Yes. You get there at 155 in the morning. Yep. Okay. Um, who was at the residence when you got there? Jessica and Daniel Groves and Dylan. What about Daniel Jr.? He was not home from school yet. Okay. Where does he go to school? Northwest. Northwest High School? Middle school then. Middle school then? Yes. Okay. Um, Is there a corresponding uh, note or activity log for this visit? Yes. Is that on page 29 of 89? Yes. All right. At that point, uh, had these other, these other services been set up for the family? They've been scheduled. Okay. What was scheduled? Uh, the Help Me Grow was supposed to go out on the first, but she said she would go uh, another time. But Mah she was already in Mahajan, so. Okay. Who was already in Mahajan? Miss Groves. Okay. Jessica Groves? Jessica Groves. Okay. Uh, was there any conversation at that point about um, what you expected from the parents? It was asked if uh, she needed to continue to go to Mahajan, and I told her that she needed to go until further notice. Okay. Were there any issues with the home itself? No. Uh, were there any uh, issues with the surrounds of the home? No. Were there appropriate uh, facilities or um, uh, items to care for baby Dylan? Yes, Ashley, Mr. Groves was putting in a crib at that time. Okay. And that he had to go back and get a piece that they left out. Did, did uh, Ms. Groves, Mrs. Groves ask about or, or, or mention why she inquired about if she had to continue to go to Mahajan? Because it conflicted with drug court. Okay. Um, and you informed her that she had to go over to Mahajan over drug court? No. Okay. She needed to continue both. Okay. How did you explain to do that? I just, she would have had to work with Mahajan to schedule around it. Okay. Because she needed to go. Is that something that a drug facility will do to schedule around the drug yes. court? Yes. Okay. All right. Did you have an opportunity to observe baby Dylan at this February 4th meeting? Yes. Uh, do you recall what he was wearing that time? A long sleeve sleeper. Okay. What what is a could you describe a long sleeve sleeper? It's a uh, like a long sleeve uh, with feet in it, and it zips up. Okay. All right. So it's it's a full full, full body mm -hmm. zipper. Was he wearing a hat? No. Did you have an opportunity? How how did you observe Baby Dylan? Jessica was holding him when I was there. Okay. And um, did you have an opportunity to hold the baby? No. Did you have an opportunity to, to touch or manipulate the baby? No. Okay. Um, so from your visual observations, that were there any injuries to Dylan? No. Was he making any kind of cries of pain uh, or uh, anything of that nature? No. Uh, what was his demeanor? 
He was quiet. She, she was burping him. Okay. Anything else eventful happened at this uh, February 4th meeting? Daniel Jr. came home from school and I introduced myself. Uh, did Daniel Jr. say anything to you? No, he said everything was going good. Okay. No concerns reported? No concerns. No medical issues shared? No. No indicia from anyone that there was anything amiss? No. After this home visit, during the next few weeks, what was your understanding of what's going to be happening in the, in the case plan and... and uh, with the parents. Because she's going to continue going to counseling, get in, continue going to drug court, schedule a parenting class. With regard to care of the baby, were there any other things that they needed to do for the baby? Well, she, the d baby did have a doctor appointment on Thursday of that week. Okay. And to your knowledge, uh, did the baby uh, attend the doctor's appointments? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, let's talk about, uh, were there times during this period that Mr. Gross failed to contact you? Yes. Well, let's talk about the first time uh, that he failed to do so. And if you could refer to whatever note you're looking at for. February the 21st. Okay, and what page are you on on the record? It would be 30 of 89. Okay, thank you. Um, so, what did you document with regard to contacts on February 21st? Caseworker had made multiple phone attempts to contact Daniel. Caseworker left messages but have not had a return call. Caseworker was worried, so caseworker and another caseworker went to the address listed on case and no one was home. Caseworker staffed with Lisa Thomas who instructed us to go to the school and talk to Daniel Jr. Okay. Um, let me back you up. So, um, it said multiple phone attempts. Um, when did these phone calls start happening? Early in the morning. Okay. Uh, what day did they start happening? On the 21st. Okay. Were there any phone call attempts between uh, when you saw them and February 4th and February 21st? No. Okay. So these are, these are calls that were that morning? Yes. Um, had there been any discussion of a work schedule before that for... Uh, um, Mr. Groves. Mr. Groves informed me prior to the, this day that he had six months of time saved up at Rural King and he was taking off. So he was going to take off. Okay. And um, did he indicate um, in that period of time that they were going on any trips to you? No. Did he indicate that there might be times where he has to have a sitter for the baby? No. Did he indicate any reason at all why he wouldn't be home with the child? No. Had he provided you with what you thought were good phone numbers to contact him? Yes. And so at this point, uh, you, how, how again did you try to get a hold of Mr. Groves? Me and another caseworker went to the school and talked to Daniel, and I gave him a note that had his dad to call me ASAP. Okay. And... Uh, were there any other steps to get a hold of Mr. Groves? We left notes in the door and in the, news, uh, the mailbox that I was there. Okay. Um, so you went back to the residence that day on February 21st? Yes. Uh, did you see anyone at the residence that day? We uh, actually saw Daniel Jr. walking once he got off the bus. Okay. Um, back to this period of February 24th or February 4th through 21st. Was Help Me Grow also trying to contact the family? Yes. Were they successful to your knowledge? No. Um, did you notice anything different about uh, the residence or the property when you went to the property on the 23rd? Other than there was a chain across the road and it said no trespassing and there was two dogs. Did you see any cars there at the address? Not the, red, not the, cab, the little red car they had was gone. All right. Um, what was your next action after that? I tried face-to-face -face contact on contact on the next morning. No cars was there. 
Was that Friday, February 22nd? Yes. Uh, between your contact on the 21st and your point on the 22nd, had you received any, any kind of contact from the Groves family? No. Um, what was the next step to try to contact them? The next step was on um, the 25th. Um, I completed my monthly uh, home visit. Dylan appeared to be clean and appropriate dress. Right. Had they gotten a hold of you between uh, when you left your note on the uh, 21st and uh, the 25th? No. Um, had, um, did you leave another note on the 22nd as well? Yes. Um, so during this period, you left several notes, well, three, three notes, three notes. All right. One with Dylan Jr. One in the mailbox and the second one in the mailbox. And a card in the door. And a card in the door. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you get there on the, uh, 25th of February, correct? Yes. All right. And was there any explanation given as to why they didn't call you back? Uh, they said they went to the doctor on the 21st. Okay. Um, but no call after, did they acknowledge getting the notes? Did not. All right. So tell us about this visit on the uh, 25th of February. Who all was there? Daniel and Jessica and Dylan. How was Dylan? Dylan was fine. Daniel had stated that he went to the doctor and he weighed eight pounds and nine ounces and was 22 inches long. All right. And you're referring to your note on page 31 uh, of 89 of yes. the activity log? Yes. Okay. Um, was everything at the house appropriate? Yes. Uh, was there any issues brought up by Daniel to you? No. Was there any concerns at this point uh, about... Uh, issues with the with his requirements under the case plan no was there any concerns brought up about uh, Jessica's compliance with the case plan Jessica was not spending the night there she was there during the day but she was not living there uh, who told you that Daniel okay um, certainly in this time period were you guys going out at night and checking to see if she were there not at that time okay so at that point you're relying on Daniel's representations that Jessica is not sleeping there. Yes. Uh, do you recall what, and I know it's been a year, but what, do, you, do you recall what baby Dylan was wearing uh, on this visit? It was cold that day, so he was wearing a long sleeve sleeper. Okay. Anything on his head? Nope. You're inside a house. Is the house warm? Yes. Okay. Uh, did Dylan have a lot of hair not a lot it was starting to grow could you see the scalp and, and, and the skull yes were there any injuries that you noted to the scalp or the skull no right. any injuries to Dylan in any other way no did you inquire if everyone was keeping their appointments yes and did either parent indicate uh, that uh, they weren't keeping their appointments? No, they said they was keeping them. All right. uh, did, uh, was Daniel there when you inquired? Junior or? Senior. Daniel yes, senior. he was. Okay. And uh, did he volunteer anything to the contrary? No. Did either parent did indicate that Mrs. Gross had not been compliant with her drug treatment since February 8th? No. At that point, had Mrs. Groves given any indication, any clear indication of where she was staying at night? Friends and family. Any other details besides that? That was it. Was, your, was, that your, was your impression that that was a multiple locations? Yes. Did either of them ever admit to you that she was staying at the residence more than allowed? No.
Did Mr. Groves ever take you aside and say, hey, things aren't what they're supposed to be? Never. When was the next time you were supposed to see the Father? 318. Had there been a time that um, I'll strike that. What was the 318 visit supposed to be? And my monthly home visit. Um, where was that? Was that visit to take place there at Mount Hope Road? Yes. And did the visit take place that day? Not that day. Why not? I got a text. I got a call stating that he was in Canton, Ohio with his father who had a heart attack. And he needed to schedule it for Thursday at 9 a.m. Okay. And this is referring to your note on page 32 of 89? Yes. Dated 3-18-2019? Okay. So when did that call come in? That morning. When were you supposed to be at the home? That morning. Okay. Was this a sudden thing for, according to the text? Yes. Okay. Uh, did, were you able to ever confirm that story? No. Did you make attempts to confirm the story? Later on. Okay. Was the visit rescheduled? Yes. When was it rescheduled to? 321. Did that visit occur? No. All right, so you're, you're looking initially probably at page 32 of 89 to page 33, is that yes. correct? Okay. So that morning, um, was it the morning that you went to the home? Yes. Uh, and was there anyone there? No. Had you received any call uh, at that point uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, Mr. Groves? A voicemail. Okay. When did the voicemail come in? You know. After I got back in the office. Okay. Is when I got it. And what did the voicemail say? That his dad got worse and he is still in Canton. All right. And did you recognize Mr. Groves' voice on the voicemail? Yes. Okay. When's the next time you saw anyone um, uh, with regard to the Groves case? Three twenty-seven. And what happened on that day? We had our hearing here at uh, juvenile court. Uh, Jessica Groves showed up, but Daniel didn't. Okay. And a hearing, um, we talked about the process early on in your um, testimony yesterday. Um, uh, this hearing, uh, was it referred to as an adjudication? Yes. Okay. And what's the adjudication about, basically? That's where the um, investigator testifies of why she removed Dylan. Okay. I'm actually going to hand you one of the marked states exhibits 13 and 14. Um, I'm going to back up a minute. You remember when we had that discussion of the ex parte emergency order that was put on by the judge? Yes. Um, would there be another order confirming that? Should be. Okay. I'm going to put up on the screen here. Well, I'll hand it to you first after I press counsel. Uh, states exhibits 13 and 14. I'm handing you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 13. Do you recognize that document? Yes. What is that document? It is the uh, decision. Okay. Is that the decision for the uh, initial, confirming the initial uh, emergency order? Yes. And does that decision uh, keep custody of children's service? Yes. All right. And that's dated January the 28th. January 28th, okay. So I'm going to put it up here on the screen. Um, the State Exhibit 13 appears to be a true and accurate copy of the uh, court's entry. Yes. Okay. So this came off the problem calls on January 17th, 2019. Okay. 
correct? Yes. All right, so with that, uh, this entry, is it fair to say this entry basically confirms that emergency removal of the time? Yes. Does it provide any additional detail other than command and custody of children's services? That's it. Okay. I have in front of you what's marked as State's Exhibit 14. Uh, could you identify that for the court? That is the entry of the court of the adjudication that was held on March the 27th. Okay, and this is the date we were talking about before I remembered I hadn't given you the other one, right? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, were you at that adjudication? Yes. Who all was there? Um, myself, our attorney, their attorneys, and Jessica Groves. Okay. And um, would Dylan be at that adjudication? Dylan was not at that. Okay. And, and that's not not abnormal for the child to be at the adjudication, is that correct? Right. Okay. And um, was Mr. Groves at that adjudication? No. Was he supposed to be? Yes. Are you required to be present at all court hearings? Yes. Did you get a chance to talk to the mother, uh, Jessica Groves, about about uh, him uh, not getting there. Yes. Did she indicate where he was? No. Did she indicate she knew where he was? No. Did you ask her where he was? No. Did anybody ask her where he was? I don't know what the attorneys asked him. Okay. And just for the record, I'm placing on the overhead of Mark 6 is in 14. In this adjudication, uh, who did custody uh, of Dylan Gross stay with? Children's services. Again, our exhibits uh, 12, 13, 14, or 13, 14, true and accurate copies of the entries from Juvenile Court. Yes. Uh, did you inform the mother of any anything that was going to happen the next day? I gave her a card and told her if she sees Daniel's that I'll be Daniel, I'll be at his house on March the 28th at 8 a.m. All right, and that's the next day after the hearing. Yes. Had you heard from Daniel um, at that point? No. Now, uh, on March 28th, you indicated you were going to be out at the home at 8 a.m. Yes. Uh, and I believe we would be on page 33 and 34 of your activity log. Is that correct? Yes. Um, were you able to see some individuals at the home that day? Yes. Uh, who all was there? Daniel, Jessica, and Dylan. Did Daniel explain to you where he was when he should have been in court? No. Did you inquire? No. Is missing court a big thing? Depends on the parent. All right. For you, is it a big thing? There's a lot that don't come. Okay. What kind of people don't come to court? Ones that's hiding stuff. Uh, Just speculation. I'll withdraw the question. Um, when someone misses court, uh, who is a parent in your caseload, um, do they often explain why they miss court? No. And again, Mr. Groves did not explain any rationale for missing court the day before. Correct. Did he talk about his trip to Canton? No. Did he talk about his ill grandfather? No. Who else, who was there at the home? Jessica Groves and Dylan and Daniel. Daniel Sr.? Yes. Okay. 
And how was Dylan? Dylan was taking a bottle when I got there. Who was feeding him? Jessica. Do you recall what he was wearing? A long sleeve sleeper. Okay. Uh, was he making any crying or any other sounds? No. Um, was there a point where he wasn't taking the bottle when you were there? Yes. When was that? When I was getting ready to leave. Did he make any sounds then? No. Uh, who was holding him at that point? Jessica. Um, was Dylan manipulated or moved around uh, from your observations at that point? No. Was Dylan wearing a hat? No. You indicated he was wearing a sleeper. You described one earlier. Is that the same style? Yes. Long sleeves, pant legs? Yes. Uh, did you note any injuries to his head? No. If his head were swollen or black and blue, would you have noticed that? Yes. Did Ms. Groves ask you anything about her case plan? They just ensured me that the parent they was keeping all scheduled appointments. All right. So who's assuring you of that? Both of them. All right. So both of them, you're saying all appointments are kept? Yes. Did they indicate they were going to drug court? Yes. Did they indicate they were going to counseling at Mahajan? Yes. Did they talk about uh, Jessica's sobriety? Mm -hmm that she was maintaining her Mahajan appointments. Okay. And who again assured you these things were happening? Both Jessica and Daniel. Did they ask you about, did one of them or both of them ask you about Jessica getting to be back in the home? Yes, they asked if um, there was any possibility for Jessica to come back in the home so she can bond with Dylan. What were your indications at that point? I stated I had to take, take it to the supervisor. Um, did you discuss with them upcoming appointments or uh, anything of that nature? I told them that they had another court hearing on April the 3rd. Before April 3rd, were there any attempts to contact Daniel or Jessica? There was one on the 28th with Jessica. I got no response. Was this after your home visit? After I had left, yes. <clears throat> was there an attempt to contact Daniel after your home visit? I texted Daniel's phone also on the same day, asking him to call me. He texted back and said he would call me just as soon as he could get signal. That he had been sitting with Jessica after I left this morning. He stated she went to the bathroom and had a spell with her UTI and she was sick and was trying to get into the doctor. Been waiting on a call back. He stated he was taking her to the ER and will call caseworker in a minute. Caseworker stated, call me when you get a chance, not a hurry. Let me ask you. Um uh, were you able to tell if there's any kind of uh, phone signals out in Otway where they live? Very limited phone service. It's, you can get a text better than you can get a phone call. All right. Because I noticed a lot of these interactions are via text. Correct. Was that the reason? Yes. Okay. And uh, did uh, Mr. Groves call you back that day? No. What day again was that? 28th? 28th. Did Mr. Groves call you the next day? No. Or text you or contact no. you in any way? No. What about the day after that? No. Till April the 3rd is the last time that I had um, texted him. Okay. So during this period of time, you're, you're, you're making other texts or attempts to contact mm -hmm. them? What was supposed to happen on April 3rd? Court hearing. Juvenile court? Juvenile court. And did the court hearing go forward? It was rescheduled for April the 18th. Between April 3rd and April 18th, um, did you attempt to contact 
Um, uh, Mr. Groves. Prior before that, on the day that I visited on March the 28th, I had scheduled my next appointment for, for April the 9th. Okay. What uh, note are you looking at there? I'm on the 4-3 on page 35. Okay, thank you. Did Mr. Groves specifically text you on April 4th? Yes. All right. What did he say? Stated that everything was okay and going great. He explained that his and Jessica's phone has minutes on them right now, so he borrowed a government phone. Daniel stated he'd text Monday, but he realized it was the wrong number and that him and the phones tended not to get along. Daniel stated that he was sick for a few days, which started on Friday and lasting through Tuesday and is still filling in somewhat. He continued to say that Jessica is still battling with her UTI. Daniel stated that they went to Canton on Tuesday and got stranded up there till about 3 p.m. yesterday. Car broke down on us and had to wait on a part to be delivered to be store, part store yesterday around noon, as I know my lawyer was telling you about it. Daniel asked why did the hearing get moved to the 18th. Haven't got to speak to my lawyer a lot yet. Let me know when you got those messages. You are still coming out next Tuesday, I assume. Send text on the phone if you need to contact me or Jessica from now on. We will let you know when we have minutes. All right. So on April 4th, um, you received this text. Uh, there's no phone conversation between the two of you, correct? Correct. It's simply a text and basically saying, we've had some bad luck. We went up to Canton. Bad luck happened. Um, we'll get back with you. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Um, there's additional... We don't need to go through that, but was he also asking uh, via text about um, maybe getting some gas vouchers and things of that nature? Yes. Uh, he also indicated, uh, maybe I misspoke earlier, um, uh, he, there was an uncle up north that was going to get him a dinner to go out for their anniversary. Yes. And so um, he was asking to reschedule something at that point because of that free dinner. Yes. Right? What was he asking to reschedule? To reschedule the home visit that I had scheduled for April the 9th. Okay. And um, were you accommodating? Yes. Were there attempts um, during this period, uh, after this period, uh, to contact Daniel and Jessica? I tried on 4-17 uh, to inform him that the GAL was coming out to his house between 4-30 and 5 o'clock that day. Okay. What's a GAL? Guardian All right. Is that somebody involved in the custody case? Yes. All right. Um, is, there, is it their job to... Um, Look at the home, uh, evaluate whether it's uh, in the best interest for the child to be placed back with the parents on custody issues, that kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So that person was trying to get a hold of um, the Groves as well? Yes. And uh, were you informing them of the next home visit as well via text that would take place on April 24th? Yes. At this point in time, uh, are you making a number of texts or attempting a number of contacts with Daniel? I had four separate phone numbers that he was texting me from. 
Uh, were you trying all four of those numbers? All four of those numbers was being tried. And apparently the guardian ad litem was, to your knowledge, was the guardian ad litem trying those numbers as well? Yes. During this time, did Mr. Groves ever reach out to you or anyone to tell you that something was wrong with Dylan? No. During this time, to your knowledge, did Mr. Groves reach out to anyone to tell them that there was something wrong with Dylan? No. To your knowledge, were there any calls to 911? No. Did you learn of some additional information on April 17th from Mahajan Therapeutics? Yes. What did you learn? Jessica had not been compliant. How long had she not been compliant? She had not had her individual therapist or any uh, compliant February the 8th was her last individual session, and her last group attendance was March the 26th. Was she supposed to continue to have individual sessions during the period of February and March? Yes. So other than this one noted group attendance on March 26th, had she been compliant with Mahan? No. It's the 26th. And if I recall, is that the date before the hearing? Date before the hearing. Again, nobody from the Groves family informed you of noncompliance? Correct. Nobody informed me. There is a... Uh, when was the next court hearing supposed to take place? 418. Did that hearing take place? Yes. And uh, who attended that hearing? His attorney, her attorney, myself, and our attorney. Mr. and Mrs. Grove was not there. Did anyone try to contact Mr. and Mrs. Groves. Yes, we text messaged all numbers that we had. Any response? At that time? No. I'm going to hand you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 15. Court? Yes. Is that the dispositional entry of what happened on April 18th? Yes. Does that appear to be a true and accurate copy of the records of the juvenile court? Yes. To your knowledge, are all those records kept in the ordinary course of their business at juvenile court? Yes. And our official court records? Yes. In this entry, Custody remain with Society County Children's Services. Correct. As to Bill and Rose. Yes. <clears throat> Did you receive another contact from Daniel, Mr. Gross, being a senior? <clears throat> via text? Yes, on the 19th. <coughs> Prior to that text, were any attempts made to contact them? I'll refer on to page 44. We tried on the... Um, 18th, we text messaged him while we was in court. Okay. And then that, we didn't get no response. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next day. What did you do then? I received a text on April the 19th um, stating he was still up north 
and that a friend is watching his home while he is away. But I also made a home visit, an unannounced home visit, with another caseworker was that, that morning. Was it, okay, so that was before this text. Yes. So you go out to the home um, with another caseworker. Yes. And uh, what do you do when you get to the home? We knocked on the door uh, several for several minutes. We looked around. I left a card in the door and in the mailbox for him to call me. <clears throat> Was anyone home to your knowledge? No. Um, then you received a, uh, there's a contact made to Rural King, correct? Yes. Um, um, was that before or after the, the text from Dan? Before. Okay. Um, you contacted Rural King. Why did you contact Rural King? I wanted to verify he was working and okay. maybe he went back to work, is what I thought. Okay. Uh, what did they indicate as to his employment status? He had not been working there since uh, 2018. All right. Do you recall in, when, when in 2018 he quit working there? No. So you received this text that they're up north, friends watching the house. Does he say anything or represent to you anything about the health of Dylan? He said, Dylan is doing great, growing like a weed, LOL. I was going to contact you when I returned from this trip this weekend. My uncle, my uncle come down and picked us up because my car is broken down and can't really drive my truck from hitting a deer. My friend is going to drive my truck this weekend, some, some just, to, just like from his house to mine, which is only like eight miles away from my house, and he... Sometimes we'll be riding the four-wheeler back and forth as well, he told me. But I will contact you when I return home. It will probably be Monday night or Tuesday morning, whenever my uncle can bring us back. But I will definitely be in contact with you. Is court still set for May 18th? Just wondering, because that's what the last paperwork I received, it would be anyways. But wanted to let you know everything was okay with us, and sorry, haven't been in contact it's just been rough having no phone, and I hate to ask to use other people's phone. I, will I feel like I bother to, bother to them, LOL. Happy Easter to you and your family. Talk to you next week. We've already contacted you from four different numbers, right? Yes. Um, once again, this uncle's coming down to pick him up? Yes. Uh, he mentioned May 18th as a court date. What was the court date supposed to be? April 18th. April 18th. He mentions that Daniel, or Dylan, I'm sorry, Dylan is growing like a weed. Yes. LOL. Did you have any concerns at this point, probably earlier, but did you have any concerns at this point about uh, how things were going? Yes. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, as a caseworker at Children's Services, uh, again, how long had you worked there? I worked there. I, before I got Dylan's case, I was there six months. Okay. In that six months, had you had a number of cases uh, uh, that you worked on? Yes. Is it sometimes common for people not to contact you? Not all the time. Not all the time? Okay. Um, did this case concern you more than, than those other cases? Yes. How so? Because I hadn't had contact for so long with him and where we was trying to get in touch with him. And so at this point in the thing, um, he's supposed to stay in contact with you. Yes. Uh, Mr. Groves is supposed to ensure the children are protected. Correct? Yes. Mr. Groves assured you that Mrs. Groves would be taking one to drug treatment. 
correct? Yes. yes. That she wasn't in the house more than what you guys allowed? Correct. Um, he had represented to you that he was employed? Correct. So what was, uh, what was uh, the, the plan of Children's Services at this point with regard to baby Dylan? I continued to try to make contact with them throughout from the 19th. I went on the 22nd, the 23rd, okay. the 24th. At this point, were there any thoughts to remove baby Dylan from their care? Yes. At this point, were there any thoughts with regard to Daniel Jr.? We had took custody of Daniel Jr. on the 24th. Okay. So um, let's back up a day. You said that you went to the home. Was that April 23rd? Yes. All right. What did you observe at the home? No one was home, so we left a note in the door and in the mailbox. Uh, the items on the porch was not the ones that was left on the porch Friday even, at evening when I was out there with the, sh uh, the sheriff. Um, no one answered the door. Um, there was a trailer parked in front of um, a camper. Uh, the attachment to the truck was off. Uh, truck was turned around differently. Bathroom window was up down down I'm sorry and the living room window was up motion detectors made the noise where in the past they never made the noise let's talk about that a minute um, you mentioned before there was uh, sometimes a chain or uh, uh, a wire across the the uh, road to get to the home the driveway. Yes. okay um, were there also did you notice motion detectors yes where were those located? As you're going into the driveway, it's almost to their uh, trailer. One's on this side and one's back here. Right. And um, they, to your knowledge, were those located there every time you visited? Uh, yes, but they never made a sound. Okay, so this time they're making a sound. Yes. You indicated that there were items on the porch from the previous Friday. Yes. Um, what were those items again? They were some water jugs, uh, some shoes. They was uh, some sort of uh, like a ladder up against the the wall of the trailer on the porch. Okay. And it was cleaned. It was cleaned? Yeah, it wasn't cleaned before. Okay. So somebody had been there. Yes. How long did you stay, to your knowledge, if you recall, how, at that residence on 423? Five or ten minutes, because we knocked and screamed and looked around. Look in the window? Yes. Count on the doors? Yes. What did you do next? Then we went to the school to talk to Daniel Jr. And uh, just for clarification, this is on April 23rd? Yes. And was that um, a Tuesday, to your knowledge? Yes. Okay. So Daniel was in school at Northwest. You went and uh, spoke to him? Yes. What was his demeanor? Um, he was nervous talking to us. Uh, he calmed down a little bit later on. Um, we just asked how, about Dylan, and he stated he was fine. Uh, I also asked him about his mom staying at the house, and she, he said yes, and then said occasionally. I did uh, request to tell his dad that I needed to talk to him, ASAP. Did you ask him about anybody else in their family? I asked him about the uh, Daniel's um, senior's dad, which would be Daniel oh. Jr.'s granddad. What did he say? Who was that? Uh, 
uh, was it your understanding that um, Daniel Sr.'s dad was the one in Canton? Yes. And so when you asked about Daniel Jr.'s grandfather, he had know, no clue who I was talking about. Was there any change in plans regarding Daniel Jr. at this point? Not at this time. What was the next action by Children's Services? We went back to the office and then on Skip ahead to page 50 of 89. I received a text on the 23rd, received a text saying they both, if you can find them, which that was where we had staff with my, our supervisor about taking both Daniel and Jessica, if we could find them. All right, that's page 51 of 89. So at that point, Children's Services has decided we're going to get physical as well as legal custody of both? Yes. All right. Um, how did you obtain custody or physical custody of Daniel Jr.? I went out on the, um, on the day and I had called the school and told them not to let Daniel leave the school, that I would be out there to pick him up. And did you do so? Yes. And were you able to find a, an appropriate placement for Daniel Jr. at that point? Yes. Who? He's with his aunt and uncle. Okay. Um, was there an evaluation on their home? Yes. Safety audit? Yes. Drug screen? Yes. Um, background check? Background check? Yes. Okay. When you were there, did they receive a text from Daniel Grove Sr.? Yes. Did you have the opportunity to review that text? Yes. What was that text about? They wanted to know why Daniel didn't get off the school bus. So at that point, it's still April 23rd, correct? Correct. 24th. 24th, I'm sorry. So at that point, on April 24th, you guys act to remove Daniel Jr. from the home so he doesn't get off the school bus. And while you're still at that home getting him settled, they receive a text saying Daniel didn't get off the school bus. Correct. From Daniel Grove Sr. Yes. Did you receive a text? from Daniel Sr. Later on that evening, I did. What was it about? He texted me asking why I took Daniel. Daniel stated that, I, I mean, come on, do you know what you're doing to him? This will affect his schoolwork. His whole life, he will, life will be. I can't believe you took him. He never had nothing to do with any of the situation at all, and this is hurting him more than anything or anyone. Where is he anyway? So at this point, via the text, um, Mr. Groves is expressing concern. I mean, there's some that uh, you guys removed Daniel from. Yes. Matter of fact, in the record, it, you have a lot of question marks after some of his questions, like multiple question marks and an exclamation point. Yes. Is that correct? So he's concerned at that point about what Children's Services is doing with Daniel Jr. Yes. What was Children's Services next step? What was your next step with regard uh, to this case?
Oh, wait a minute. Let me back up. Do you receive any... Um, Did you attempt any more visits at the residence? On April the 30th. The day, I'm sorry, April the 24th, the day that I received the text from Daniel on why I took Daniel when I was placing him, I left the placement and went directly to the home. Why, why did you do that then? Pardon me? Why did you decide to do that then? Because he had asked, wanted to know how Daniel wasn't there, so I thought, well, then they're home, so I went out there. Okay. Uh, was anyone there when you got there? No. Did you knock on the door? I knocked. I screamed. I even jumped up and down to try to see if there was anybody in the house. The dogs was barking. The windows was opposite this time. The living room window was down, and the bathroom was up. Any cars or vehicles? Both cars was there. All right, the... Um, the, the truck and the car and then the four-wheeler was there. What was your understanding of the car that they got around in? The, the red Cavalier. I okay. believe it's a Cavalier. And was it Cobalt. there? Yes, it was there. Okay. During this time period, and if you could talk in general, um, were there texts forwarded to you or um, directed to you that were from Daniel? Yes. Uh, what was the nature of those texts? Uh, there was one on um, 426 that stated, well, the person that was supposed to give him a ride to court this morning just screwed them over and okay. said... They so they, another excuse. Correct. Um, uh, was there another text later? Back and forth. Okay. More excuses. More excuses. Um, what, what action was taken by, uh, well, was there a representation made by Daniel Sr. to you that he would be returning baby Dylan? Yes. What was the date of that representation? There was one um, text that I had sent Daniel that he needed to have Daniel Dylan and Daniel Jr. stuff at the agency on 425. And then once again, I received a text at 7.52 a.m. stating that he would bring Dylan to our agency the first thing Tuesday morning. Okay, what page are you on for that, ma'am? 55 of 89. Thank you. Did Mr. Groves bring baby Dylan in that morning? No. After they failed to show what happened next, did the agency file any kind of report? On the 30th, I filed a missing person report. Who did you file that report with? Scioto County Sheriff's Department. At this time, did you also receive information from Christ Care Pediatrics? I received information from them on May the 1st. I received an email stating that they was trying to get in touch with me. Um, to your knowledge, had Christ Care been attempting to contact the parents as well? Yes. And were they successful in contacting the parents? No. Um, was there a medical concern, well, at least at that time, were you under the impression that there was a medical concern regarding 
Dylan um, from Christ Care Pediatrics. Yes, the uh, nurse from Christ Care called and informed that they would, needed to repeat some lab work on Dylan back in February that his parents had not completed. Dylan had an abnormal newborn screaming, screening, and if it's not treated, it could cause brain damage. She faxed all the paperwork to caseworker, and she uh, said that he also had an appointment on May the 2nd, also at 2 p.m. All right. Now, did that turn out that that was a, um, actually a lack of communication between the doctors, that there, were, there was the subsequent test and he was normal? Yes. Okay. So at that point in time, that, did that add to your concerns? Yes. All right. If you would, could you ref can you go to the second paper clip? It should be page one of 53 of the activity log. Are you there? Yes. Okay. So at this time, um, what was the agency doing to try to get baby Dylan back? We was trying, uh, I was text messaging him. I was um, trying to get a court order for the sheriff to help. Um, we also did an, um, tried to get an Amber Alert. Okay. Um, how many texts were you sending? I texted him on every phone number that I had for him. Did you make any attempts to uh, follow up with uh, any relatives up north? Yes. Did you have any luck with that? No. What did you do to try to find them? I Googled the Grove's name and can't know how. So I took each name and dialed every phone number. A lot of the numbers was disconnected, but the people that I did talk to didn't know who I was talking about. So you, every Grove's listed under Google in Canton, Ohio, you made an attempt to call? Yes. The numbers that Daniel had given you earlier that you called him on, was he by responding to those? No. Um, had Daniel ever given you a number of any of his relatives up north? No. Had Daniel ever given you a name of any of his relatives up north? No. You had mentioned an Amber Alert. Back up a moment. Um, on May 3rd, was there another attempt to locate the family at the residence? On yes. Page 3 of 53. Yes. Okay. Who all went there that time? Myself, another caseworker, and a deputy sheriff. Okay. Any luck? No. Uh, what cars were there? There was no red Cavalier in the driveway, but the truck was there. The camper was there. There was another white vehicle there with the doors open. Do not discuss this case amongst yourselves. Do not discuss it uh, with anyone else. Do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence. It is your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it's finally submitted to you. Uh, Ms. Kraft, I would remind you that you're not to discuss the substance of your testimony until you finish your testimony here today. All right? Uh, you can stay there or you can take a break if you need to. Uh, just be outside the door here in just a few minutes. When the jury's ready to return to the courtroom, we'll uh, return and finish the morning's testimony. Court is recessed.